Our guest today is Ali Bakshinishad, founder and CEO of Vasognosis and an AI-enabled imaging company. Welcome, Ali. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for making time. Um, our, our series is on founder stories. So, uh, of course, I've known you for many years now. So I, I want to uh, make sure that I don't deprive our listeners of the actual story. You know? So let's get right to it. How did it all get started? Yeah, so I guess that uh, starting of this company was a long building uh, process. From the first day that I got to U.S. in 2014, the idea was to start my own company from the day that I started my PhD, I was in the hunt for a good idea that makes sense in terms of to become a successful business. So during my PhD and postdoc, I was working on different algorithms to look at brain aneurysm. And the idea over there was to select the best device that makes more sense for a patient and increases the chances of the outcome of the operation. Uh, so I formed a company in 2019 based on the research that I was doing in my PhD and postdoc. And we started as AI-powered diagnostic and surgical planning software, which over the time, the story changed, as you know, the startups, as you are going forward for a market product fit, that's that what happens. But that was the initial idea. I was going to say what, you know, tell us what you do, but should we go first to, well, tell us what you did and then tell us what you do now. Yeah. As I mentioned, we started as a cloud-based platform to screen for brain aneurysm and help the surgeon to select the best device that basically increases the chance of the outcome. Uh, as we released our first product a couple of months ago, uh, we had one pilot site testing the software, which was the screening for aneurysm. And uh, through the platform that we released to them, we had this a small feature that they were able to share data with their colleagues for a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. And what we learned was uh, they are starting to using that a lot. So that was the baseline for the pivot. So now where we are pivoting is basically we just pivot on the business model, but the technology is the same. We have our cloud-based AI screening for vascular diseases, but then the business model in, uh, instead of uh, essentially charging the hospital for a screening, now we are following a business model similar to Box or Dropbox for data sharing, peer-to-peer -peer conversation. So think of it as a combination of AI screening with a Slack and a Dropbox, essentially. And so that's one of, one of the first surprises, but I guess it'd be like people use Instagram messaging as one of their primary, you know, ways to communicate. And that's kind of crazy when they're much better purpose-built platform, but, you know, some people just use it. And so yeah. I suppose you, you came upon something that has um, a lot of value to doctors and uh, as a startup with an eye towards opportunity, you, yeah. you decided to at least not neglect that, that fact and, mm -hmm. and, and, and lead with it in some cases. So yeah. When, you know, I always ask this question because um, here you are on the podcast and it's, everything's wonderful and we're talking about all the great things that happen. Yeah. But, but every, every startup has not just one, but usually many tough moments along the way. Right. And uh, I don't know if you're, are you willing to share? This last year was really challenging for everyone, especially uh, pre-revenue startups as we, you know, experienced into the COVID. Uh, so first of all, everyone was hit really hard. The mental health of the startup that, you know, you are pre-revenue, you are struggling on the financial was, you know, on top. And then we just opened our uh, seed round back in February last year. And as you can imagine, with the all the country closure and everything, we couldn't really raise funding dragged till end of the summer and we were out of money in July last year. And then we just got lucky because we had our NSF grant under review and it just came to say was, uh, but for about like seven to eight weeks was really challenging because the, there was no money in the account. So no one was getting paid. So I was basically every night uh, like uh, waking up fearing that my people, you know, my employees going to leave because they didn't get paid. 
but uh, I was lucky that I had good employees. They stick with us and, you know, we passed that time, but that was really, I guess, a scary moment. That's always something that when you're dealing with such a small margin and such little money and no certainty or ability to raise more um, at a moment's notice, it's always tough. Um, but it's great that you have partners who are backing you in that. So since I never want to stay on, dwell on that negative side, sure. uh, as every startup too, you discover things that are a grace blessing. I suppose you mentioned one already that the NSF grant coming through, but what, what are other surprises? So a startups always in hindsight, it always looks like, hey, you started here and then you got to here and people think it's some sort of a almost straight line. And of course the, the, the truth is it's like, valleys of death and peaks of excitement but on the peaks of excitement or the, what are what are some of the things or what's the, the one thing if you have one the biggest surprise was the what basically led to our pivot in the business model again like when we released our software we only had this small button it says share and they could share the data and what we learned was they were using that button a lot more than anything in that uh, the rest of the software and that was really, you know, the, the, I don't know, super exciting moment as well as a re really surprise to us because we didn't really know that the physicians, they love to share with their peer. And then after we were like asking questions about them, like why they are using that, what we learned was, as you mentioned, like people might use Instagram direct messages as a primary channel of the discussion because of just a preference or, you know, the platform that they're using. But when you come to the uh, like physicians because of all the HIPAA constraints, they cannot really use anything for that to you know have a discussion or ask for a second opinion. So what came to our surprise is that there is no tool out there to make them capable of having that secure converse, uh, like the communication with their peer to ask for a second opinion or share their ideas with each other. And that basically causes a lot of different waves inside or development or business model changes and everything, which was a big surprise. And as soon as we uh, made the pivot, the, we got a lot of interest from different institutes to just use that. And, you know, we're super excited about it. We are exploring that piece. But as you said, startups is always up and down and you never know what works, what doesn't work. So just here to... Uh, enjoy the ride, experience different models <laughs> to see which one going to stick and which one has the best product market fit. And, and I know um, you have a, a variety of people on your team and you also built basically an advisory board. I mean, I know you have some people that you, you go to and ask your opinion. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about that piece? I mean, what, who, you know, how did you find some of these people? Who is it you're talking to? Obviously, a, a team members are always number one, but, but then there are also these other people that might have different bits of information. I guess I usually try to think of my advisory board into two to three different categories. The first one is the people that are or potential end users. These are the physicians that we're trying to build products for them. The other category is the business uh, people that they work in this industry for years and years. And the third category that I'm just newly starting to develop is people like myself, that they been in this uh, business, they started the startup, raised funding and built or found their own product market fit. So I usually look at this like three different categories. On the end user side, I usually like to get introductions to them through my investors, such as yourself. If you remember when I was in Dallas, you made introduction to Jeff and Jeff is still one of our best advisors and he is potentially our end users that he is, you know, once in a while we get together, have a discussion and his feedback is really critical to me to understand what his needs are. And then through the network that I've built over this last two, three years, I found that the end users that I have a few that I really go back to them, ask questions about like, uh, you know, how they want to interact with such a software. If you build this product, if it makes sense, doesn't make sense. I'm kind of customer discovery and iterative with them. And because they are my advisors, they are like super critique and, you know, straightforward because you don't get that honest feedback from uh, strange usually. 
Then on the business side, I have a couple more people that they work in big corporations. They brought the products to the market. They uh, basically commercialize big products. And those people are usually on the commercial side of it, what business model makes sense or not. And then the third group, as I mentioned, I just started building that is the peer, you know, uh, other startup founders uh, like myself that they had a success. And I just want to learn from their experience as well. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, an important group. And especially this year when it's harder to meet them, it's, it's good if you already have someone you can talk to about being a CEO, being a startup founder and bounce ideas off of them just on the general side. Yep. I absolutely agree with that. So uh, along those lines, any, any particular things that you, I mean, it sounds like when you came to the US, um, you had a particular desire to find something you could build a company around, but any advice on what would you believe somebody should do before they start a company or some things that they should consider or any specific training they should get or anything that you can think of that would be helpful? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, challenge for any startup, doesn't matter which uh, field or what product they're looking at, is to find that best product market fit. After two years, I'm a still a struggle with that because, as you know, healthcare is the, one of the most challenging parts to introduce a new product into it. But I guess the essential of any startup founder is to have the skill to know how to ask questions from the end users to be able to identify that product market fit. And if you cannot ask questions, if you are shy away from you know, asking questions and you don't feel comfortable, I guess that would be the first skill to develop. To be the person to ask the question, don't be afraid to get in front of people. And you know, even your questions might be embarrassing at the beginning because you still don't know the field, you don't know what you're trying to do. So that first encouragement is on, you know, ask questions, keep asking questions and don't be afraid to get in front of people. I think one of the best things to ask questions is uh, lean startup methodology. You know, the whole concept is about, you know, asking questions. And that there are a couple of books in there that I can, you know, share the names and everything with you after this call. But I would say those books would be a really good starting point. Just, uh, I mean, uh, Eric Reese's book. Yep, that, um, that one. Then there is, uh, there was another book on the Lean Startup that called uh, Mom Question or something like that. I, I can send it after this thing to you. And yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, Eric Reese's book is called The Lean Startup. And then right. um, obviously there's, there's a variety of other good ones uh, and we can attach them to this podcast as recommendations of yours mm -hmm. um, as well. So actually it's called the mom test. So that's a really short read. I think it's like maybe a hundred pages. Is it the, the what test? The mom? The mom test. The mom test. Yeah. Like so the whole concept. Mom? Yeah. Mom as a mother. Yeah. Okay. So the whole concept is if you go with the worst idea to your mom and she always says, you know, I love it. That's the best idea. But the idea is how to ask a question, even from your mom, that she cannot lie about the, you know, a bad idea. So you're talking about lying moms? That's terrible. Yeah, well, you know, moms tend to love their kids. <laughs> They're never going to tell you that you have a horrible idea. So, yeah, the mom test is what they are actually training in the i program. An SF ICO program, and that's a base on you know how to ask questions. Okay, that's a cool book. A good idea. I'll put that on our on our li uh, reading list as well. Well, if we if we just want to take a couple more questions here, so one one I have is first of all I, I want you to you know people that listen to this or uh, fellow startup founders, entrepreneurs, and um, you know anything you find important or for them to know, I'd love for you to share that. And the other thing is just on your business and how do you look forward to look forward one year, two years, three years or more? Mm -hmm. what, what do you see uh, in, in your startup? So I guess on the first question, the one resource that I basically keep iterating on it and every day that surprised me by, you know, what uh, great outcome I'm getting on it is to basically keep networking. 
and the networking is you never know how you or who you're going to get in front of people. I know this last year been really hard to do that, but uh, there are always tools to network with people and just run the ideas with random people, as strangers, because all the time that is still keeps surprising me is some people from other industries, they have a unique perspective to the problem that can actually help you to solve your problem. And people are willing to share their experiences. So the networking aspect of it is really important. So right now I'm taking about like three, two to three random meetings each week. So there are these different services that randomly matches you with the people in the field. Which ones those are? Is it the lunch? Yeah, lunch club. Lunch, lunch yep. club. And I found it really, you know, good value out of it. Actually, I have a couple of angel investors that are interesting to invest in us that I met through the launch call. So how does it work? I, I uh, tell, tell our listeners. Yeah, so Launch Club is uh, pretty much a matchmaker for networking. You put your profile up there and they randomly match you with the people either in your region or in your field. Depends on you know which one you select. And each week you get three, two to three, 45 minute meeting with these people. You just chat with them, just network and see what they do, you, what you do and see if you can help each other. So it usually comes down uh, that, you know, I learn from their experiences. I met people from Facebook, from Google, that these are like the research scientists there, or the people that they had a successful exit, or they had a failure in the startup. And everyone comes with their own experiences that they are willing to share their experiences with you. Okay. So That's it's a really cool. interesting concept to kind of randomly meet people, because at these times, we cannot really go to a conference and meet like, you know, direct people there are some virtual conferences but i guess after being uh, in front of uh, virtual meetings after a year and a half people are tend to shy away from these meetings so now it's just about you know how people what people you meet there randomly so i guess about your second question three to five years uh i'm sure that we're going to have a lot of other challenges coming to us and going to be a lot of more up and downs but uh, one thing that I can see it that where we are going is to build this community community of the physicians that they have a peer-to-peer conversation, which is enforced with the AI findings and the AI image screening tools. So we are envisioning this platform to become a community of the physicians, that they help each other with better uh, patient diagnostic. Anything else you want to add? Um... Other obstacles, ideas, wisdom? (laughs) The wisdom would be uh, just hang in there, I guess. I'm still still after two years. I don't really sleep well every night. I don't remember when was the last time that I slept eight hours straight. It's super stressful. So if you start this journey, make sure that you can hang into it. That's not an easy path forward. I think, you know, one thing that you have that is important, I think, in a lot of entrepreneurs is you're an outgoing person, you are a friendly uh, natured person, you seek opportunity and are have a winning personality. And when I mean that, it's just you're willing to take a risk. I mean, just this lunch club, for instance, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, I don't want to do that. That's, that's full circle for me as well, because when I first got started in entrepreneurship, I was a researcher. So now, you know, there was this, this breakfast meeting I went to and uh, I mean, I'd get all dressed up back then, you know, suit and tie. And then right afterwards, I'd go to the labs. So I'd have to like dismantle it all so people wouldn't make fun of me. And, and so I'm going to this meeting. And of course, I'm the, guy, the one guy in the whole room that nobody wanted to talk to because I'm a researcher. Like, who wants to talk to a researcher? And so I know I'd know no one. It was mortifying. And um, eventually I'd know one person, another person. And as you grow, and you just have to put yourself out there. And if you, if you do... I always learned, I always learned one important thing, or I met one person in a meeting that was beneficial or helpful, not just to me, but also me to him or her. And um, I never regretted it. And, um, but, you know, I got up at six in the morning to go to that meeting and others just slept another hour. So if you're an entrepreneur, and Ali, I know you're the quintessential entrepreneur, you're a go-getter then uh, you take those opportunities and and run with it. We're looking forward to seeing what the next iteration of your company brings. And um, we're going to be watching carefully and always be supportive of you. So yeah. thanks for making yeah. time today. Always uh, a pleasure. 
appreciate you making time. Again, I spoke with Ali Bakchinshad today, founder and CEO of Glasognosis, an AI-enabled imaging company located in San Jose right now. San Jose. All right. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it.